A very good evening to our viewers. Uh, thank you for joining us on the agenda this Sunday. My name is Tewan Jabela, your host. Tonight on the show, I'm joined by uh, people who are actually making a huge difference in the media space. Uh, that is uh, Shelly Gunn Peterson and uh, Jamila Bjekis. And uh, they are both journalists, uh, of course, and we are here to talk about uh, a variety of things, including, of course, the good news that Namibia has gotten back on top of the African African free press charts. Ladies, a pleasure to have both of you. Thank you for having me. Always a pleasure. <laughs> yeah, thank you. I'll start with you, Shelly um, Let's start with the good news, really. Uh, we were top, we were, we were knocked off the perch by um, Seychelles last year. Now they are fourth, we are number one in Africa again. Um, wh what do you make of it uh, in particular? Maybe wh wh where did it come from again? What is it? Did we do something specific or is this that maybe someone somewhere else did worse than us? And I don't mean to sound like a pessimist. <laughs> I think everyone else just didn't do as good yeah. as they should or didn't f forge a f forward. But I also think we don't necessarily in Namibia report incidences yeah. that happened. Um, I mean, uh, just in the last, I think, year, we've had numerous incidences, especially mm -hmm. with women journalists. We haven't reported it. Mm -hmm. And it's great that we're number one. In all honesty, um, if, if we look at, at journalists, you can write the story and know, I'm, I'm going to go home. Mm -hmm. And you have a doubt that, you, obviously, there will be doubt and there will be a bit of fear that uh, something might happen. But you know, you'll be okay at the end yeah. of the day. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, that is to be celebrated. And um, we are back on the chart, which is great. But we, I think we are so nonchalant here as yeah. journalists yeah. because of the freedom and sort of because of the, the extent of safety that we have in the country. So, um, Jemima, your, your impression of uh, the fact that we are back on top uh, in Africa? So, Toivo, um, I haven't had time to go through the report, but I believe the reason we are back on, on the top is Remember in the last uh, last year we, when we were take, overtaken by seashells, we, it was because seashells had just enacted a media law. Mm -hmm. And um, the only thing that held us back was because we didn't have that legislation in place. We have it now. So we have everything in place, but the, uh, uh, including the law now. Mm -hmm. So that definitely puts us back on the top again. Um, but like uh, Shaligan uh, is saying, it is, it is definitely no easy feat. Mm -hmm. And I think for, uh, often we take for granted that um, that we are the free express. Mm. We take that really for granted. Um, people think that it doesn't mean anything. It means a lot. Mm. It means a lot. And, and when, you, when you engage with other journalists around the world, you realize just how privileged we are as a country. I mean, um, in other countries, uh, especially African countries, people don't, I think the man on the street does not understand yeah. uh, in Namibia what this freedom means. Uh, in other countries, people don't have the privilege to run up to a minister when he's in a shop yeah. and ask him a question mm -hmm. to get a quote. In other countries, you don't even get to see the, uh, the, the, the president if it is not for official reasons, and you don't dare talk to him. Mm -hmm. Like we can even, I mean, we are so free in Namibia that we can call Mr. President. Mm -hmm. Can we quickly have a word with you? Yeah. And, and he would uh, look around and just laugh, and uh, he would and most times give us an opportunity to speak to him directly. And, People don't have, people, uh, um, we have that privilege that we can even chit chat mm. with our president. Yeah. Yes, of course, most times he's condescending when it comes to hard questions. Yeah. But the fact that we can chit chat with him means should definitely count for something. And I think, um, the, uh, remember during your time when you was, were, were a journalist, getting to the state house was not an easy thing. Yeah. Like we can literally just now, just get our name on a list. Dennis, can I have an interview? Yeah. I'm coming through and your name is on the list, you get in. Yeah. That is definitely something mm -hmm. that needs to be celebrated. And I think with all his flaws, we should definitely um, uh, uh, commend uh, President Gengop. Mm -hmm. Well, obviously he loves people. Yeah. So, yeah. So, yeah. It, yeah. so he's a people's person, so, and um, yeah. that is what he does best, no, engaging with people. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Shaligan, you, you, you alluded to something earlier about uh, the, the, the challenges that uh, female journalists in particular uh, endure on a, on a daily basis. If you can expand on that a little bit, what, yeah. what, what have been your experiences for example? I mean, last year we had, I think, one of the biggest incidences where one of our colleagues, Tracy, had sent some questions to a politician, um, asked for comment, the politician wasn't happy, and exposed her number to her followers and, and, and her party's sympathizers. Mm -hmm. And that led her to uh, uh, a mountain of threats. Mm -hmm. 
um, death threats and threats that they know they're going to find out where she lives and, and, and at that time she had been dealing with a health matter mm -hmm. and that had put her life in, in, in danger as well as a result of the pressure that she'd be re been receiving mm -hmm. and the best that was done was that the, that the editors forum had something to say about it but that's about it I mean, we don't have an official report on what really happened. The person never truly apologized in public as loud as she was as exposing that, or ex in her words, exposing that journalist. Mm. Recently, uh, we had another colleague at my office where she did a, sto a story about a fraudster and uh, the fraudster sent her a message to contact her in some way and said, listen, here's your ID number. Here's your address. I know we, I'm coming after you. And I mean, Jemima is probably going to speak on her experience, but she had a very similar experience. And that is aside from the daily sexual harassment, you know, from, and, uh, and I think we really focus it more on politicians, but I'm talking about CEOs, yeah. spokespersons of, of, of corporate companies, whether it's SOEs, whether it's private sector, we know who you are. And you know what's funny is that the PROs, the, the very people in the communications department blatantly ignores these, these complaints because they feel like you are one out of 500 who have worked with this guy, who have said nothing about it. Um, I mean, that's one of all, and I, editors still struggle, especially because we have a lot of male editors. You, I mean, you yourself, you're an editor, you still struggle to really comprehend and understand what action you need to take. Obviously, your first thought is the police. The police start with investigations. That still leaves a very vulnerable person. Um, we, don't, we still don't have guidelines in place that speak about how to deal with sexual harassment. You do what you figure out is best to do in that sense. Um, and I mean, at, w when we had um, the celebrations here in Ventuk a few years ago, and that was one of the main topics. It just didn't seem to run through into the newsrooms where we need to deal with these issues. Um, we have women um, editors who also don't know how to deal with, with it. They often play down and say, ah, colleague, we've all been through it. Mm -hmm. But I mean, when are we going to get to the point of having some sort of, 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 of guideline a routine um, response to say this is what we need to do this is how we handle it and we're not gonna we're not gonna fall short in reporting it and speaking about the report Shavarma, some of the incidences that has happened has not gotten into the report and um, yes it was about us um, um, passing the law in Parliament but yet again we haven't enacted it we also haven't enacted the the whistleblowers act which goes hand in hand with the ATI uh, uh, um, 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 act uh, if we look at uh, other things like the, the information commissioner and and uh, according to the act they allude to it being a lawyer and 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 we've seen some of the issues when it comes to the lawyers and media and these are some of the issues that I'm bringing up ahead but these are some of the issues that um, we need to now already start really sitting and thinking about because it might just start to make our jobs as difficult as much as it can make it easier. Yeah, and of course, not to forget the, the incident at the coast where uh, some of our colleagues, they also got kicked by some ah, frauds that they caught, Melinda yeah, uh, Clerk and, yes. and, and others. Um, Jemima, you've been very vocal uh, for the longest of times about the need to have more women in leadership positions in the in, in the media industry, um, and I'm thinking now when Shelligan says what she she just said about the dominance of male editors and uh, the, the, the vulnerability of female journalists, that if there were senior female figures, maybe that uh, the, the 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 amount of protection could have been much better. No, absolutely, I agree with you. Because once a woman is in a leadership position, you have some sort of authority. Mm -hmm. Now you just as a, a news editor, for instance, there's very little you can do. Because like she said, and I've seen, my experience has also been mm -hmm. with most of the news editors, we, we, like uh, they don't really know how to handle this because they've also been through it and because um, we really still have a patriarchal system in place that's why most of our editors are still male so that's how it plays out yeah. they um, so you've been very supportive in my cases but not everybody's been so supportive some editors would even laugh at you make it um, and I've been in a newsroom where they would even laugh at people and where um, uh, editors would make jokes at women, uh, their breasts, and say they have fallen heroes, those kind of remarks. Now imagine 
Imagine mm. if, that's the, if that's the atmosphere in a newsroom. How do you, I come to you who uh, looks at my breast mm. and you say, I, my, because it's dropped, because I've gotten babies, uh, I have fallen heroes. Or you look at my uh, uh, hips and say, yeah. oh, you have uh, uh, nice love handles. It's very good to, what is it? How fast play for David? Mm -hmm. yeah. Those kind of things. Or even touch your buttocks because that's happened in a newsroom that I was in. Mm -hmm. Now, if you are in an atmosphere like that, how do I come to you, Toivo, yeah. and say, this minister's done this? In my experience, they would actually say, why don't you take it as your advantage? Yes. Yeah. So now, how do I, as the news editor, help my junior? Yeah. I need to be, and that is why I say, we need to, because men don't, you know how I educate in the newsroom mm -hmm. about pronouns, about gender issues, mm -hmm. identity issues, because be, for a very long time, people, people don't take these things serious, but these are people's lived experiences. Mm -hmm. Now, if I am just a news editor, I don't have any form of power. I don't have any form of influence. Mm -hmm. I cannot help anyone because I've also been through it. And how do I take it to the male editor? Who's just going to be like, um, you know what? I, uh, uh, maybe uh, let's not take this so seriously. Mm -hmm. And uh, so once we have that editor in place, yeah. that female editor in place, she also then needs support system because we have, an, we obviously number one, she, because she will now be, uh, she'll have to fight the patriarchal system. Yeah. She'll have to fight the pull me down syndrome. Yeah. She will have to really instill, uh, uh, what is it, um, dis, uh, uh, what is it, discipline, demand respect from her team because we, our journalists, we are so used to male editors. Mm. We are so used to male leadership. We, we can't see a woman and we cannot respect a woman as an editor. And I think that is why people would say female journalists fail, but it's because, not, not journalists, news editors, because of these systems that are, are in place. Yeah. We definitely need a complete overhaul of our system right now. Yeah, well, what must be done to get more women in, in, in leadership positions. What, what, are the, what are the impediments at the moment? I mean, um, I, if we look at the issue of news editors, editors if we look at any um, editor position, whether it is an associate news editor, yeah. um, what we've often noticed is um, we call it the brotherhood. Uh, what we call each other and say, comrade, there's a job here. Mm. Um, also, in the media, we, it seems like we do have jobs for comrades also. Because mm. it seems to be a system where um, I know my editor is leaving. There will be a position open. Um, I can call Jemima and say, Jemima, we have a position open for you here. Um, just apply. We'll also get, um, let our colleague Linia into it. And then the two of you apply, whoever wins, wins. And, and, and that's what we're seeing some of these uh, male colleagues do within their circles. Mm -hmm. That is number one, that's some of the issues. And these are the same guys who advocate for women to apply. And when these women apply, it's, it's all of their shortfalls are now immediately within um, the spotlight. Um, we, we need to deal with, with the issue of the man versus woman conversation in, in the newsroom. Mm -hmm. And as much as we, we want to pretend it's not there, because we do have very open and, and very real conversations in the newsroom, um, no matter how um, explicit it is. Mm -hmm. um, I, I think editors need to... Uh, we have a lot of males who, who do undermine that. And, and as an editor, I mean, as a journalist, I see it within the newsroom. That behavior shouldn't be allowed. Uh, a male journalist should not be able to to to... to for instance, disregard what his senior is saying if that's a, uh, especially if it's a woman, yeah. and that shouldn't even be, be be let go. And secondly, have a a kit, have a not a kit, a oh. not a child, a guideline on how to deal with harassment, mm -hmm. how to deal, and also how to prepare young women and um, to go out into the field and experience harassment because a lot of the young kids don't know how to do it. Yeah. Um, I, I think that's number two. And number three, uh, and as women, this is where we need to perhaps come in and ensure that that constant mentorship. And I think that's one thing that I will always sort of pump in is that as a whole, the industry doesn't mentor. Yeah. As a whole, the industry doesn't say, okay, um, you've been in the industry for over 15 years. I'm going to take whoever, um, Jemima, the new Jemima in your office under my wings, and I'm going to show, I'm going to teach her the different writing styles and to see what her interest is. We blatantly just don't do that. Mm -hmm. A journalist of 20 years can go 
and that will be the last that they see we see of a great court reporter mm. and that knowledge is gone to waste i think once we get the mentorship the guidance and the true respect and understanding in newsrooms mm. of how to deal with issues how to deal with um, people trying to um, undermine each other in the newsroom yeah. once we can deal with that we're already starting with the little cracks and understanding that there's a system of respect in the newsroom yeah. and regardless of your sex when you walk in you work as hard as you can to get to where you are it's not because i know Toiva at whatever place but it's because i know that this person deserves it and has the best potential we've lost multiple journalists mm -hmm. as a result of of how um how um, misogynist the industry is. And I, and I don't even mean the sources, I just mean the bosses. Mm -hmm. We've seen great investigative journalists leave the office because of misogynist bosses who just refuse to step down or refuse to allow a woman journalist to succeed over the male journalist. We've seen that and mm -hmm. we've allowed it to, to go because it's gossip, it's industry talk. Mm -hmm. Um, um, and, and, and those are things that we shouldn't slip by because we're losing great potential as a result of it. Yeah. Uh, Jemima, I, I've, I've worked with, um, when I was coming up in this industry, um, in my formative years, we had a lot of female journalists. Um, I was at NBC in 2006, uh, great journalists there, female journalists, but uh, that crop uh, has left the the media industry, they've gone into public relations and corporate communications. <coughs> and to my thinking, if they were still in this industry, they would have probably been editors. Uh, do you think that uh, that also affects the, the, the whole thing that, that maybe because of those uh, threats that women face, that they come into journalism, spend a little time, leave? I, I don't think that corporate communications, for example, has a is the cleanest space now. The, the men in that space are, are, are better behaved than, than the ones in the newsroom. But um, that constant uh, departure of women, do you think it also affects now the... Because just when they are reaching the stage where they should be now taking over, then they leave. Because I have I've seen, for instance, I know of a very senior a journalist at the, uh, a previous news, a newsroom, very senior journalist that was, like you say, just she was about to become mm. the editor mm. and men with less experience got that position yeah. and she left mm. and she went into corporate uh, affairs and yes corporate is even uh, mu much dirtier um, than the newsroom mm. but um, unfortunately now you have to am I so you are stressed you are hurt you feel undervalued because you've worked so hard you've proven yourself so much right. and then this young person is young man is ushered in and the person is just the editor now mm. and you have to now I mean it hurts like you've given your all yeah. and you really deserve this and I'm not even talking about entitlement like you've just said like uh, and and this happens everywhere mm. that's why you see them leaving mm. because when uh, you and usually if you don't know to look at that crop who's who's in the positions that they should have taken up men yeah. yes um so that is one of the very big issues we have mm. in this industry mm. um like you you know I, I also advocate for um changing the way we assign journalists yes. in the newsroom mm. like uh, the heartbeats uh, uh, not the hard the beats, beats, obviously, the hard <laughs> beats, but the, 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 beats. the strong beats like yeah. economics, politics, because politics makes you, I mean, it gets you, it, it makes you a brand because you, with these big people all the time, the same with business. Mm. Um, a young boy will come in and the senior female journalist will sit there mm. and she must just go about her day report on crime, on babies that were delivered, ministry has now inaugurated a new building, nothing exciting. Mm. Because the editor has decided the men will fill those positions. Because yes, the, the patriarchal system, men, boys club, the men must be by the money, the men must be by politics, mm. women belongs by the children, women belongs by the food. Yeah. So that is, that is one of the problems we see in this country. Because people want to venture into a specific beat where they want to uh, specialize. It's not even always about the editor position. Yeah. It's just wanting to specialize. 
You know, I had to fight my way to, to cover the fish rod yeah. because at first it was p given to a male. You, uh, so not mm -hmm. many people are um, assertive as I am. Mm -hmm. And then they just lose interest. Yeah. And then they like, they, they weigh up. So am I gonna stay here when I'm not valued? And anyways, under, uh, what's the word? Uh, I don't want to just say underpay. I want to say critically underpaid. There's even a worse word, but I yeah. can't find it now. But critically underpaid, or am I going to go into a PR office where I'll anyway sit and go and do my master's mm. and be properly paid where I can buy a house? Mm. So what, which one am I going to take? The PR job. Oh, yeah. And yes, I will make do with the corporate uh, um, uh, dog, eat dog, whatever, th that ugliness in the corporate sector. But at least I have a house. At least I have a salary. I can go to a spa. At least I don't have to fight for um, this kind of thing. Yes, and these people cry when they're in this, these positions because their heart is still in the newsroom. Yeah. But unfortunately, patriarchal system is still in our society and very much in the newsroom. Yeah, thank you. We'll talk about the salaries slightly after the break. Uh, uh, we will be back uh, in a moment. We are so excited to be kickstarting your morning with the entertainment. Everything was happening mm. during this past weekend. Yes. Exciting news. Wow, no, she was killing it already. In my opinion, I don't see anything wrong with him serving the full term. As well as keeping you informed on the issues that you need to know happening in and around our country. Another exciting episode of Iran World Talk. We bring you all the latest news and tell you what we're going to do first. You don't want to come back. We continue the conversation with uh, Shiligan and Jemima. Um, I, I, I still want throw, to throw the question back to Jemima quickly because uh, you are part of the, the Journalist Union. Um, you are in the leadership structures. You are there also, isn't it? <laughs> well, you are just a member. Support. <laughs> yeah, for sure. So, the one of the issues I, I saw the Indian Namibian um, Sakosi Kela spoke at length about uh, the conditions of uh, journalists, you know, in terms of pay and stuff like that. Um, what are the concerns? It is very bad. Um, at one media house. Well, I'll be frank here. At the Namibian, we had to, at the very last minute, we had to intervene because they wanted to cut at the, uh, they wanted to cut the rates of freelancers mm -hmm. at the very last minute. So imagine you've worked for a month, and then now two days before the 25th that you must now pay, they suddenly want to cut your rate. So you were supposed to hypothetically get 8,000. Now you're gonna get just 4,000, but you've budgeted because you know how many stories you've written and you've written so many stories so you can cover your house um, and your rent and your what, what, what. And they wanted to cut that. So mm -hmm. we, the union, intervened, intervened at the very, uh, we've, we, we managed to, make them change their mind at the very last minute. Yeah. Um, we are still in conversation with them on the terms for uh, freelancers because they don't have contracts at the Namibian. Um, at the Confidanta, we've camped out there several times to, um, like one day with, uh, the leadership had to go and corner yeah. um, uh, the, the people there and then um, the editor just did not pitch up, but um, eventually we got to a point where um, while we were there, people started getting their salaries. And these were people that were not paid for three months. Mm -hmm. Now imagine one of them was a, a young pregnant lady and um, she was uh, thrown out of her house. Yeah. Where do you go? And also um, there's this thing of people preying on cheap labor. Mm. The Zimbabweans, like if you, if you are in this country, you have a permit, you and then um, you, you, there's nothing you can do. You must just listen to what this boss is saying. Mm. So, sorry, so if this boss is saying, you must wait, otherwise I'm going to report you. Mm. What are you gonna do? And, and then they pay people allowances. In this industry, we don't get salaries. Mm. We get allowances. If you compare it with other people, some people, once they've paid their rent, some people are, as, uh, uh, are even privileged enough to be able to pay the rent. Mm. There are people who cannot even pay the full rent. That's how bad salaries um, 
are when it comes to journalists in this country. We, uh, we, I mean, at the NBC, the, uh, um, the union also intervened where we got the IFJ involved because we, 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 are, uh, we are still fighting to be registered and that is definitely a political issue right now because we've submitted our application long before two, uh, two, of, uh, two unions that are now registered. Mm -hmm. And we are, I mean, we are, every time we just get it back, we must put an I or T here. So you know it is, uh, it is just BS. Yeah. And we've gotten a lawyer in so we can uh, fast track the situation and see what can we do now. Um, so because we couldn't, because we're not registered, we couldn't really truly intervene. People would call yeah. us a briefcase union and even chase us out of the boardroom. So we affiliated with the IFJ, International Federation of Journalists, and then we, so we intervened at NBC where workers were on inhumane contract system, one month, two months, that kind of, uh, how do you live like that? Mm. And also, how do you justify that when this worker that is on this contract is with the company for 20 years? There's no, there's no indication that this person's services may not be needed for the next six months yeah. or the next year. And they have changed that as well. People are, have now been given um, a permanent employment or a longer contracts um, uh, system, hmm. um, contracts. So that's how bad, it's, it's, it's very bad. We can't even, um, uh, I don't know how to even justify this. It's very bad. I mean, I mean, even to talk about it, it is very bad when it comes to the, tra uh, the treatment of journalists. Mm. And then because of the situation, COVID, the, the financial repercussions of COVID, mm. the economic downturn, people, uh, at, um, media house bosses are using this now as a, as a, as a tool to intimidate journalists and, and, and mistreat them because I, I won't be able to say, Toivo, I can't do this because you will threaten me and say, well, remember, I am still the one that pays your salary. Mm -hmm. And because there are no jobs in the market, you've seen what, what, the mar uh, the, 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 uh, what, it, what it looks like out there, people lining up, uh, thousands of people lining up for four or five jobs. Mm -hmm. Nobody wants to lose their job, even if it's $3,000 worth. Yeah. So it is a very bad situation where we are right now. And I always say, coming back w from the salary, to, uh, it is connected. Mm -hmm. the, cell, the, the conditions of workers is very much connected with a free press. Yeah, yeah. Because if you don't, if you, journalists are not paid uh, decent wages, if they don't have decent conditions, they will get a master. Yeah. And that master will come in the form of the brown envelope. And it will undermine and eat away from our media freedom, but not freedom to report the quality of news. Yeah. The yeah. way we report. We, we, we will be used of, uh, as propagandists. Yeah. And then what, what does our uh, news look like then at the end of the day? I hear you. Uh, Shilligan, your thoughts on that? Um, <clears throat> I mean, for example, the, one of the uh, arguments that I encounter with uh, fellow leaders in this industry, people will be saying, you know, the, the media houses are not making money, they are barely breaking even. Um, that uh, they simply do not have the resources to pay as ideal, as, as ideal. What has been your experience and what, what do you think should actually happen? I mean, the change, the digital change being, exp being used in, as an excuse has been coming on for the last 15 to 20 years. I mean, when was Facebook created? At that point, was there no idea that things will become digital? when Instagram was created, when Twitter was created. There was no idea that, oh, there might be a point when Namibia does go digital and we will require to be smarter when it comes to digital platforms. Mm. If we look at our um, multimedia departments with, with, within newsrooms, how, how, how seriously do you take your multimedia Comrades, do you sit down with them and say, colleagues, let's strategize for the next uh, two years. What is our digital plan? How are we going to ensure we are leading number one? We, why aren't we at the discussion when it comes to issues like the Lotteries Act because and the Gambling Act that greatly affects our work, mm. that d disables 
um, in the radio stations, broadcasting um, media houses from monetizing on platforms such as on all social media platforms, including mm. YouTube, where, for instance, the agenda could be on YouTube making money for your institution, but it's not because media houses are not at the forefront of those discussions. No. We rather would write about the consultations. We won't be in the consultation. There's only one media house that was at the last consultation and actively speaking about um, promotions. For instance, if any media house is running a promotion, any radio station is running a promotion, mm -hmm. it's either the, you, I, you either got a letter from the chairperson of the lottery's board um, and you must do that for every single competition you did or it's illegal. Yeah. Or what you're doing is actively against the law of this country. We don't see editors having discussions about that when we have press freedom or when we have our, our meetings with editors. Why yeah. aren't we discussing, why aren't we monetizing our social media platforms? Mm. Because Namibia right now is greatly suffering mm. from it. And we just talk, we're talking about social media influences. They now have to, um, or all of us have to um, depend on, on, on bigger companies. Mm. Whereas we, we could be making money from um, for, uh, the same advertising that we had in the paper, you just bring it on TV. Yeah. You'll make the same amount of money. But we're not in that discussion. Um, th those are some of the problems that I feel like we lack when it comes to our, uh, our editors, our, 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 our marketing and sales teams. Mm -hmm. These are the colleagues that should be at the forefront of how do we make money. Yes, we're not going to make money from co uh, having your newspaper online. Namibians are not willing to pay. Yeah. We've already seen that. Yeah. Um, we are all moving into broadcasting, either radio or TV, which is obviously still your most traditional ways of making money. We have not seen any sort of brilliant innovation when it comes to the industry. We are all going to live streaming. Um, uh, our, my, my company is doing it, your company is doing it. I mean, there's only so much to fight for um, yeah. when it comes to live streaming. Um, and, and that we've also sort of seen the rest of the world do. Yeah. Um, but we haven't really sat down and, but even as an industry, when last have, have we as an industry sat down and said, these are some of the, the issues that we need to discuss. M newspapers making money or media companies making money is not just an editor's problem, it's a whole industry problem. Yeah. Because in 10 years, we hope to be editors and we will be faced with the same issue because you would have only taken us five years what about the next five years? Mm. We need to carry each other in the industry. I think those are some of the discussions we, we need to start have, having as, as colleagues and on also pushing to the editors. Um, if we are not making money, I mean, um, by all means, we try to not make journalists public figures, but at the end of the day, they are. We're not even using platforms that the journalists have, like we see other countries to or other journalists to make your journalists brands at the end of the day they carry your brand for you yeah. you don't have that responsibility on your own that decentralize uh, uh, decentralization of of the brand mm. needs to happen because that's where the world is going everyone believes people people don't believe companies yeah. i mean some of these um products that we have um, i mean the fish rot um, documentaries or even the fish rod stories that we write have we ensured we've created a series I mean we just released a book very great uh, we need to ensure that these stories or any of the tender stories why aren't we translating it into different languages mm. and ensuring everyone in this country knows what truly is make money through that sense you understand that is still informing the people yeah. uh, and and we have a lot of de development agencies who put out uh, grants and projects to fund those um, those routes uh, who fund projects where uh, media houses translate um, stories into different languages. Mm -hmm. And a lot of us don't actually see these opportunities. We sleep on it. But these are some of the efforts. I mean, I just mentioned like three or four that could be active um, avenues of, of, of profit for, for media houses. Mm -hmm. So the idea of we're not making money anymore is because we still expect the same traditional thought of 
it needs to be the paper, it needs to be advertising in yeah. the most traditional way. We have gone to advertising on our social media pages. We have gone to advertising on our live streams. It feels like we have, we have reached a cul-de-sac. We haven't. We need to branch out and really sit down and, 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 and write down some of these ideas and put, m and put our effort into it. Yeah. I mean, we, we, we have the, the, the greatest gifts of our networks, of, of, of our sources, to sort of lobby and push the idea of ensuring that certain structures are in place to ensure that media houses do thrive. Yeah. Because once they don't thrive and we're seeing slowly but slowly news media houses and, and newsrooms shrinking to the size of five uh, staff members. Mm. And it's not conducive. The quality is already suffering yeah. because we can't really go into in-depth investigative stories That's as true. much as we can. We can't have yeah. three journalists solely on the investigative and just doing investigative stories that pr pr that produce three stories in, let's say, in six months. We, we can't have that because we need them on these stories that need to come out tomorrow. Mm, I hear you. Yeah. So in 2021, um, when um, the World Press Freedom uh, they were celebrated in in in, um, in recognition of the Windhoek Declaration, the 30th anniversary of the Windhoek Declaration. Um, the theme of media viability was one of the key uh, recurring uh, themes at that event. Um, or the global audience that um, that was you know zooming in or here physically in Windhoek, they were really hammering on that because I think there's a recognition now that uh, there are simply no resources and that we have to evolve and fast in order to, to, to catch up. Um, you spoke about how the, the newsrooms uh, have shrunk. This is very, very true. Um, I've been in this industry for nearly 17 years now. Newsrooms used to be big when we, we first joined. Now we are really operating on a, on a skeleton um, staff complement. But Jemima, the is, is the recognition of the fact that um, media houses come in different sizes in our country and that um, when you work for a smaller media house that your, your, your salary might be will not be the same as for because I was advo advocating one time for tiers to say just like you have the SOEs tier 1, SOEs tier 2, tier 3 that perhaps one of the ways to do it is also to, to do that in, in our industry and see because if a guy works for um, for a, a PDF, uh, a newspaper that is only dis distributed in a PDF format, uh, and he wants to be paid uh, as uh, as yourself who works for probably the biggest uh, daily newspaper in the country, uh, then it becomes problematic. So, how are we gonna balance that? Do do do, just, do journalists understand that that tricky part, or do we just say, "Oh, I'm a journalist, and therefore I must just be paid"? No, journalists absolutely understand that tricky part. Mm. Um, I'm looking at some of um, the smaller news um, papers, new media houses, mm -hmm. and many of them get around $3,000. That's bad. Uh, exactly. Mm -hmm. You, uh, I mean, um, at, at some of the, pu the public broadcaster, you have to work your ass off mm -hmm. for overtime to get a decent salary. That was now during the contract system. Yeah. Um, so um, it is, it's, it's just unfair and people are taking advantage. So yes, there, there is an understanding of that, but unfortunately, journalists are exploited, whichever way we are looking at it, yeah. they are exploited. They are um, exploited as cheap, uh, as cheap labor, as I've just said. You find uh, journalists from outside the country are here and uh, who are working for these uh, media houses. And even some of them are working for big media houses, mm -hmm. but, but they have no um, agency to negotiate because they need a job and mm. the editors know that they need that job desperately for their permit. So they give them what they can think of, what they want, mm. what they feel they will give them. And um, it is bad. There is no way that we can justify the under, uh, under uh, what is it, under uh, mm. payment of journalists in this country at all. Mm. Yes, yeah, sometimes people say other countries are worse off, but that we sh it shouldn't even be that. Yeah. That should not even be an argument. Journalists are, are, are um, paid very low across the continent. Yes, yeah. it is. A, it is definitely a thing, but it shouldn't be a thing. Yeah, and well, we should uh, sh we should yeah. stop that. I mean, let me yeah. just go a little bit just to mm. also address what you said. I mean, we have media houses. I mean, 
independent media houses are not willing to, to implement the grading system within their spaces because it will be too expensive. Mm -hmm. That's their accusation, is that it will be too expensive to implement a grading system to ensure people are getting paid well enough. And it, it, it doesn't mean just because you are at three of the biggest daily papers that you're getting paid good. Mm -hmm. I know people at smaller media houses that get paid much better than people at my media house. Mm -hmm. And their bylines are on the front pages every day. Yeah. We have people at big media houses who still are treated like interns, yet they produce the biggest stories every week. Mm -hmm. And that's why we've lost big journalists, oh, big journalists, great journalists, mm -hmm. who have produced stories every day on the front page, produced very critical stories, mm -hmm. uh, pertinent stories to, to change the course of, of, of how Namibia does things. Um, yet, yet that journalist um, didn't get paid enough, barely made enough to get to the office every day, mm -hmm. barely made enough to ensure that he has a good medical aid for when he's sick. We still had to so put money together if the person was sick to, to, to give them medicine. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's just not conducive. And I mean, we can have the tears, but, but we've known in journalism, it does, regardless of your smaller newspaper, regardless of your smaller media houses, mm -hmm. there can still be great stories coming out. Just a few months ago, we saw the brief as just an online platform. Now the brief is really been able to di make stories digestible, uh, business stories digestible for it, for the everyday person. Yeah. So, I mean, we can have the tears, but journalism sometimes is so unpredictable when it comes to quality and pushing out some of the stories that having a grading, having the, the, the tears, um, I mean, it will just sort of play water down the efforts of, of, of each newspaper. There can be a, a, a media, a, 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 let's say a newspaper, online paper can have three consecutive bad editions, but the fourth edition can be great stories coming mm -hmm. out mm -hmm. from it. So, I mean, the tier system, I mean, it's debatable both in the financial and in the quality of stories. It's yeah. a bit ne debatable in that sense. Yeah. No, no, I hear you. You see, for me, I'm, I'm trying to find um, a solution because right now it's just a messy space. Um, there are no standards, uh, agreed standards, um, to say that if you occupy... Uh, of course, I, I've worked as managing editor at, uh, at New Era, and uh, there we had uh, a more um, professional um, setup to say if you are, uh, of course, it's the same as, as here at Namibia Media Holdings, that you have, if you are in a C band and C2, everybody at C2 gets this or whatever. But, <coughs> but it, 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 it doesn't make sense to, to have a C2 at uh, Namibian Sun and they see two at the Namibian ending differently. Uh, maybe we are, not, I mean, th in terms of the organization wh which owns Namibian Sun and the organization that owns the Namibian, I think they are, they are on par as organizations. Uh, the, the brands of the newspapers may, may vary and whatnot, but in terms of wh why should uh, somebody at the Namibian who's at the same pay grade as yourself not in the same as you, because we've left it to captains of industry just to decide and say, yeah, no, but this is what you're offering for this position. So I thought if there's a st standardized system that says everybody in the industry, if you're in the tier one media house and you're at a C, whatever, mm -hmm. this is the, the framework of your, of your salary. Uh, can I ask you a question? Yes, yes. How did that conversation go down at the editor's forum? Uh, <laughs> I'll put you on the spot now. <laughs> it wasn't an easy one. Because <laughs> <No. laughs> we all know how that conversation is going to go down. Yeah. And it no, will but take I, some I, start. But I did, I did really raise it because last year, but I, I've just gotten into the, um, into the executive committee of the media, of, of, the, of the editors forum late last year. I don't think we've met th this year. But I mean, those are the voices that we want to, to bring to the platform and say, but because for me, I'm, I'm, I am for decent wages. I don't believe in these poverty uh, salaries. And Publicly, no editor <laughs> is not for decent salaries. No, I, I tell you. Publicly, no editor <laughs> is not for no, decent salaries. No. I can defend my record. I have 
uh, I have fought for people uh, all the way to the board, board of directors, to say I have reporters, brilliant. I had reporters, for example, that uh, didn't have the justification why they were not getting the salary as high as others in the newsroom was because apparently they don't have qualifications. So I sent this one reporter to, to India. I, I approached the Indian embassy. I sent the reporter to India. He got a, uh, a diploma after six months. He came back. The company says, oh, but we need uh, this qualification to be accredited by NQA. NQA, the, I send the guy to NQA, NQA says, no, we don't recognize six months, <laughs> six month uh, qualifications. Problems. I had to write numerous submissions to the board to say, look, this man gives me uh, front page stories every day. He is as good as everybody. The only anomaly is his academic background, but I don't see that deficiency in his work. Why don't you pay him? That I had to argue on, on merits, and then eventually um, it, it happened. It was actually two reporters. But so, so in that case, I can defend my record publicly. <laughs> well, publicly. Uh, publicly. <laughs> I, I, want to, I want to add. I think yeah. that there are two things that um, exacerbate this uh, underpayment, and that right. is a very illegal uh, thing that has been normalized by HR practice, uh, uh, practitioners. Is mm. uh, they ask for your payslip when you apply and you get a job. Mm. So now I'm, I'm like she's saying, I am at the place where I'm producing like that guy from India, or who went to India, mm. and I'm underpaid. I am desperately underpaid. Mm. Now I'm sending that, then they use that. They use that and give me just $2,000 more, oh, yeah. when the job actually, the job salary is triple mm. of what I've earned. Mm. That is a reality in this industry. The second one is the boys club, you know the boys club, you were in a boys club in the journalism, you guys were together, mm -hmm. you know money, you have, uh, some of your uh, friends are CEOs, mm -hmm. um, you know money. So when someone asks you, Toivo, so how much would you want? You would be able to say, I know my capabilities, I want $30,000. Mm -hmm. Now we don't know money. Yeah. I remember when I got this job here, well it was, it was, it was really much better than I um, had ha uh, received at the previous company. Mm. But I could have gotten more money. Mm. Mm. Well, I got a decent salary, but I, uh, compared to what I've, uh, I've never known. But if I've, uh, if I've known what kind of money people should get paid, yeah. then I could have said I want so much money. Yeah. And imagine the other one, I earned 7000 so for me, 10,000 is, is hitting goal, mm. when my salary should have been triple that. Mm. So now people do, what they do is they just make you happy. Yeah. They just add 3,000 more. Yeah. And that, that is still a reality in this industry. Then you'll speak to editors in this industry, or news editors, the males, mm. and they will tell you, well, you negotiate it like that. Other people negotiate. When I come to you, well, it hasn't, for the record, I didn't come to Toyo and ask for an increase yet, but he will give me after this because he has a, a, whatever to, to defend. Yeah. But when, uh, when I come to you now, Toyo, that, that happens in the industry. Mm. And I say, Toyo, I need an, um, a, what is it, um, an increase mm. because my male colleague gets um, paid more than I do then the, the attitude is usually, well, that guy, um, he negotiated his salary. Why mm. didn't you negotiate for a better salary? And that holds us back. Now imagine the rookies that come into this industry. Yeah. For young people, getting 3,000 is a lot of money. It's they, whatever they do with it. So now people are taking, you see how people take advantage of yeah. people. The system takes advantage. The editors takes advantage. The whole setup takes yeah. advantage of people who are vulnerable. Women are vulnerable for a very long time. And people keep saying we want to play the victim. But these are realities. We yeah. are only now, what is it, last year we began that little mentorship group where we would call yeah. each other yeah. and help us, let's help each other with stories because we don't no longer want to be um, at the mercy of men. Mm. We've only started that last year. And some of us really truly don't know money. We don't have accountant friends, which I see uh, CEO friends. Yeah, yeah, I hear you. Yes. We'll go for the last break. Uh, my director says uh, we man, must actually continue just and, and finish off. Yes. So, 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 so. Mental health. Yeah, so I, I, I agree. Um, I mean, the way forward now colleagues, um, because these conversations have been going on for the longest of times. 
and uh, we ought at some stage uh, to reach uh, a point where we say, but now there is steady movement forward to, towards what we want to, to become as an industry. Um, I mean, from my perspective as an editor, as a, as, a, as, a, as a business leader, if I can call it that way, is to obviously delve into some of the things that you mentioned, um, the innovative ways to really, because I can tell you, the truth is, media houses do not have money. That one is true. Of course, and, and we don't want now this perpetual, we don't have money excuse to just continue boiling down on people on the yeah. ground because they suffer a lot. Um, but there's barely any profitable media house in this country. Very, very few, you can count them on, uh, on one hand, but, but there are so many in the country. So, um, so there's no money. When NBC went on strike the other time, and uh, the 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 state the the, the state the, the state had to avail money to NBC, mm. and the state was actually saying no, we, we're not going to do that because NBC itself didn't have the resources. So do you go to the bank and, and borrow to pay salaries? That would be reckless uh, business behavior. So they don't have money, but I agree that while they don't have money, the question is then what are they going to do? to get money so that uh, they can really treat people um, more decently. Um, so I, from a perspective of an editor and, and whatnot, uh, those are my thoughts, that they will have to get money somewhere. But I mean, all the conversations that we've all been having about not having money over the years, what has it produced? Where are those ideas? Did we desert them like we've deserted the, the resolutions of the Second Land Conference? Where are we, are, we, are we getting to a point where we pile up papers for, for them to, to just sit behind and at some point we're going to go back and say, ah, we had that idea in 2005. Mm. I mean, it, I feel like it's a, it's a talk shop all the time, like you said, we need to f implement. I feel like it's always a talk shop. Mm. There's always been ideas on the table. Yeah. Pursuing the ideas has always been, I think, where we have lacked greatly. We do, first, we don't have formalized platforms where we can ensure we all pull our weight together as an industry. Um, mm. I think th th those are some of the loopholes that we need to address. Okay, the, the journalists have the, have the union now, and it's really proved to be such an, an asset um, when it comes to troubles. Um, it, it's quick to, to, to act and to assist and to really step in where it needs to step in, mm. although it's not registered. Um, and, and for years we've always said that the Editors Forum is toothless and, and, and you don't, you have such a great platform. Mm. You have the biggest editors of this country in a news, in, in, a, in, a, in a forum together where you guys can pull your efforts mm. that you've built in the last 15 years, pull it together and actually try to create a profitable industry. I think you are failing miserably at that. I mean, you use the platforms that we have to have discussions that matter, really have meetings. We are in May, the Editors Forum haven't had a meeting. That is problematic, problematic behavior. We need to address these issues. And I mean, is, I mean, having a meeting and really discussing, that is not rocket science, we can do that. Yeah. Writing a letter to the lot to, to the lotteries board from our compliance officers or our or, or whoever is the legal person in our in our space and and starting those discussions on yeah. how to work on monetizing uh, uh, online platforms that is not rocket science. I hear you. Those are doable efforts. I, I hear you. We we are out of time. In thirty seconds, your your final remarks, uh, Jemima. The first step for us to uh, fix the situation in the newsroom is to recognize as editors that we are sitting on a time bomb. We have a terrible, extremely bad mental health crisis in the newsroom. Mm. People forget that journalists are people. During COVID, we've also lost uh, relatives. We haven't had time to mourn those people. We were at the front lines. We mourned other people. We haven't had time to mourn our own people. We've seen everything. And on top of that, we had to also attend to crime scenes. I always say um, our job is worse than a police officer because the police officer, officer sees the crime. Mm -hmm. We go and see also the same crime scene. But what the of police officer doesn't do, they don't go to the Omar and uh, listen to her crying and sobbing 
and little children and babies sobbing over their mother that was brutally hacked to death. Unlike the nurse, we don't have to go, uh, they don't go back repeatedly. We have to go because we have to get this raw details. And we, have, we don't get time to deal with these issues. The newsroom is under um, uh, a shrinking. So we are piled up with work, we don't yeah. get time. The union has, has, has uh, done a, a sample study um, that shows that at least 80% of our journalists cannot work without um, self-medicating themselves. Or, and, uh, and the support is very, very, um, is lacking in the yeah. newsroom when it comes to mental health issues. The union, uh, the Namibia Media Professionals Union, NAMPU, is working on a, on a conference, on, on a workshop because we want to we want to get tangible results. Mm. Journalists are, are drinking themselves to death. Mm. We think it's just, uh, we, people are just having a fun. It's not. I've spoken to someone who went on a trip recently mm. with journalists who, who took pictures yeah. and she does therapy through pictures. And she, uh, she, she was devastated. I hear you. When she saw these pictures, we are a broken media, whatever. We are broken journalists. I hear you. And that needs to be addressed fast very very fast absolutely i hope uh, my fellow editors have tuned in to also to listen to the conversation i think it's a legitimate uh, legitimate concerns have been raised tonight on the show and uh, we hope obviously as leaders in this space we'll find a way to find solutions thank you ladies for making time thank you thank yeah. you for my yeah increase. <laughs> <laughs> that's uh, tonight's show thank you for watching and uh, have a lovely week ahead Thank <laughs> you.